What's going on, Bulls Nation? And welcome back in to our CHGO studios. Coming to you yeah. live from the West Loop, Chicago. Yeah! You found yourselves. Yeah! Tuned in to the yeah. CHGO Bulls post game. <laughs> I'm Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. The cackling laughter to my left is Big Dave. He is at Pal BWL Sports. Bow. Will the Goat is over there. He is at Will underscore Gottlieb. And joining us in the magic bubble from Australia, Marquette. it is the fourth member of our crew, Mark Carazolas, MK Hoops on Twitter. We got our producer and our pal, Joey, Woo. running the boards. Whoa. Whoa! Joey, hit the horn. Uh. Hit it now, Joey. It is, you know what time it is, Joey. No, Joey. You know what the hours are, Joey. Oh, you you said, know what hours oh, You said the horn. You did ask him for a I horn. I did ask you for a horn. <laughs> You're right. But you know why? Because I'm in them hours, Joey. That's what I'm in. That's where I'm at right now, Joey. It's the meathead hours, man. I told you if we won, what the hell was going down on this show? When we got back on here, the pregame was for sadness. But the win is for gladness. Yes, it rhymed. Oh God, damn it, that felt good. If you're wearing, yeah. if you're wearing Come headphones, on. if you're wearing headphones, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I apologize, Mark K. I need to put in earplugs. Oh, <laughs> it's so a loud. win, dude. Dude, that win. What? Who had that? Nobody. It was sadness, and everybody was upset, yelling about Zach, ready to cry, ready to be upset. Hell no. They came in. That whole second half was beautiful. It was beautiful basketball. And DeMar freaking DeRozan. Oh, he ain't going to have it no more. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. I don't know if he can do it anymore. He's still too old. Shut up. Me and I was, man. It's me and head damn I was. Oh, what a win, Matt. Matt, that felt damn good. That so felt damn good. Oh, all right. I'm done. I'm so happy for you. All right, I'm done. That um, was way better than Matt's sad. <laughs> oh my God, so much better from the beginning. So much that better. Was so I'm much sorry, better. Marquez never I seen me like this. That. I apologize. See, that was it. Wasn't that big of a swing for Dave? Dave was feeling good coming into the game. I was, regardless of all of the shit news we got before today's but game. You, I mean, you weren't like, you weren't ready for that, were you? No, like I said, it was a surprise. <laughs> but I said on the show, if they pull this win off, it's over for y'all. <laughs> yeah, post game, it's over. I said that. Uh, over. But shout out to you never know, man. AK giving us our first super chat of the night. <laughs> Throw us those super chats. They're fun awesome. and they're money. Uh, who said Peck angry meter pregame was plus 10 postgame minus 10. I have no anger. I had my angry pregame beer and now I'm having my happy cool down postgame oh, beer. Tastes a little different. Equilibrium is, be is, is balancing out. Mark, how, how was it watching that game trying to figure out what the heck was happening? First quarter, terrible. Second quarter, gore and magic. And then second half tomorrow. What was your biggest takeaway? Look, I was just impressed that they didn't give the game up. Uh, yeah. And the reason why I say that is like so many times last season, this felt like a game whereby, yeah, like they were just like last last season, they would have given this game up. It felt like in the first half that the, the, the Heat were punching, that the Bulls were just going to let this thing go. But then Dragic did some Dragic things. But yeah pulled back into the past and sort of stabilized everything and then DeMar did DeMar thing. So this was really encouraging for a number of reasons. Obviously, we'll get into all of them. But I, yeah, I just I was just constantly expecting them to let go, but they didn't. And, and that's and the reason for that was that that was the consistent theme in the last sort of 20 to 25 games of last season. But it kind of felt more like the first half of last season. So that, that's actually really encouraging. So I'm not going to go complete meat, meathead hours like Dave, but just because Woo! I can't. But... I, I, I'm, I'm kind of teetering on that level as much as I can possibly, if that's a thing. <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to have it again, man. I don't know, but I, I wanted it for this one because this was huge. Because it was just the fact of who they were playing, who they were going against, and the adversity they were facing. And like you said, Mark, we were used to seeing the Bulls have that adversity unfold and start doing those silly things. Drumming, I'll get into you later. But we, we're used to seeing that kind of stuff, <laughs> man. But you saw them pull it together and – I mean, Dragic is a big reason for that composure uh, that they had in that fourth quarter. And that's why they kept putting him in. Even when they tried to take him out, they were like, no, you got to go back in the game, man. Because then people forgot how to inbound the basketball oh or catch God. a basketball in or run a play and do things like that. And, no, he was he was real stabilizing for them, man. So I, I enjoyed the backcourt. I, I thought Ayo also played well. We're getting into him as well. Uh, Kobe did a solid job. Uh, Caruso was awesome also, man. But, yeah, it was all about DeMar DeRozan and what he did, though. But I think Mark's absolutely right, and I think of it's, course. Worth, it's worth just, like, highlighting. This is a game they would have lost last year. Yeah. 
for a couple of different reasons. One, when we first started doing the show was when they started really their downslide. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we kept on coming back to was, uh, you know, Grayson Allen hit a corner three, Pat Compton hit a corner three in the second quarter, like the first, first couple minutes of the first quarter. <laughs> yeah, and man. that was it. That was the game. Yeah, yeah. And Tyler Hero came out and he hit three threes off the bat. And it looked kind of like they were going to collapse a little bit. And then, yeah, I mean, Dragic came in. Threw a three up that somehow went in, like trying to draw a foul, just threw it over his shoulder and it went in and then they got hot and they just, they ran with it yeah. and they, and they held the line. You yeah. guys were like laughing at me when I was saying this, but like Mark said it too. They did not give up the lead. This is something yeah. that they would have done last year. No, I, they, they held on to it. I agree. It was nervous laughter because I knew you were right. And I didn't want to think about the Bulls trying to hold. You were telling them to hold the line when they had a 10-point lead halfway through the third. Exactly. And I was like, Will, you are talking about holding the line <laughs> way too early. Because you knew as much as the Heat were struggling with their half-court offense, yeah. you knew they were going to make a comeback. Yeah. Absolutely. And they did. Absolutely. And the the clutch play, I think, I will we'll get all into this, but like the clutch play was really impressive. I think obviously outside of DeMar and just the, the brilliance of him being able to get a basket whenever he needed, but Vicious. yeah, the composure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the Dragic, I, I like that closing lineup with him and Io and Caruso Yes, and DeMar and Vooch. Obviously Zach wasn't there, but it was just an interesting look and, and it worked out. No. And the other, just real quick, and yeah, then I'll yeah. toss to you, Dave. Um, Billy preached it during training camp when he's been talking to the media. We want to be a better offensive rebounding team this season than we were last season. Mm -hmm. I was going ape shit because the way that the Heat got back in the game while the Bulls were struggling to find any good looks for themselves on offense, mm -hmm. the Bulls were giving up second chance points after second chance points yeah, yeah. in that early part of the fourth quarter as sure. the Heat crept in and it was driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. And then the Bulls flipped the script on the Heat and the Bulls were crashing the offensive glass yeah. in the back six minutes of the fourth quarter. And whether or not they converted <clears throat> second chance points, at the very least, they kept the clock moving and got yeah. themselves an extra possession. That was big. It was huge, and and you mentioned the rebounding also. I mean, Io had six, uh, Caruso had five, uh, Vooch was a had calm six. seventeen, a calm regular seventeen <laughs> for him. But I just wanted to add to the point you were saying, uh, Will, about those guys uh, being under pressure. Is in that fourth quarter that lineup was guys who are always cool under that kind of pressure? You know, it was Io, it was Demar, it was uh, Dragic, it was Caruso, and it was Vooch. Those right. are all guys who are like icebergs when it comes to those kind of situations. So, yeah, it was, it was great, Marque. Can we bring that picture back up? I mean, that, that second middle picture that you guys, you, you and Dave, Matt, you look like you were dancing at your, your first dance at your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> that was after a hug. Uh, that's pre-hug or post-hug? That, yeah, that's post-hug. That's immediately post-hug. Post 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 that's post-hug, yeah. I missed, I missed during hug. That was post hug. And then you, get mad, you get mad on the on the right and the left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just having a meltdown Honestly. per usual. <laughs> Like, yeah. you guys should Whoa. charge people to watch you watch the <laughs> You would make a fortune. No, I think I would make most people nervous to be around me. This is, yeah. Big J's yes. got That's used to it at this point. I, I, had my, joy. I had my first hat throw today, Mark. I threw, I threw Matt's hat. Like I had my first wow. hat throw. It's true. Yeah, it was, it was a no. day. Oh, weird, weird times here at the CHGO <laughs> studio. Well, that, that symbiotic connection that you two had, like that's kind of how I felt like Io and Caruso was just like the entire mm. time in the backcourt. And this is what I've been saying all off season. Like I'm very comfortable with the Bulls point guard rotation right yeah. now. And I, as much as this game was about DeRozan just doing DeRozan things in the second half, like mm. I don't want to like not emphasize how much of a team win this uh, this game was. Yeah. Our man, Io DeSumo, our mate. I, I don't know yes. if it's just like the, this is CHGO connection buoyed him into this type of performance, but he was there every <laughs> single quarter. Be something. Like he, he, he was just fantastic. Caruso just did Caruso things, didn't shoot the ball well, had some turnovers, occasionally lost hero on, on possessions on defense, but mm. again, just doing stuff. And Dragic, like I wasn't a big fan of the Dragic signing, but I'm pretty sure they lose this game with that gore on Dragic. And hopefully he can replicate it again. Him. Um, maybe this week he played this way just because he was playing his former team. I don't know what, but nonetheless, like this was a huge game from all three Bulls point guards. And interestingly, Billy closing with all three in both halves. So that's an interesting, an interesting look that I definitely want to get into because we've spent so much time talking about the power forward rotation. And here's Billy Donovan closing with three point guards, De DeRozan and Vucevic. It's, mm -hmm. it's just funny how everything worked out. But uh, yeah, shouts to Iron Caruso and Dragic. They deserve a ton of credit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's pinpoint Io specifically for a second. Um, 17 points, three of six, one of the few guys on this team who actually shot well from behind the three point line tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and 
as we discussed a pregame, our new family member here at CHGO. Yeah, yeah. Um, somebody tweeted at us as that game was about to get underway. Or no, as the game had been underway and I was looking pretty good and, and they were like, oh, Io knows that he's got to play well or else he's going to get shit from the guys at CHGO. <laughs> Not the case. Never the case. No, we're only <laughs> we're only kind to Io. Thanks. Um, but, I mean, it's not an eye-popping stat line kind of night for Io, mm. but just we mentioned a vet like Goran Dragic having poise when this team needed some poise, especially mm. with that second unit that could get a little chaotic tonight. Io plays with so much freaking poise yeah. for a guy in entering year two um, and, and one of the beautiful moments that pointed that out to me, Say and it. you noticed it too, Dave, Say it. when Drummond was acting a fool, yes, and Billy should have subbed him out two and a half minutes ago, Facts. and he got a dumb tech late in a game when the Bulls see their lead dwindling and dwindling and dwindling after Drummond was called for that throwing Bo's offensive foul under the hoop. Io is up in Andre Drummond's grill, yep. a dude who's a foot taller than him, a <laughs> hundred more pounds of muscle than him, and ten years his senior. And Io's telling Drummond, "Hey man, deep breaths, right. chill out. Right. We need to close this. You yeah. need to focus. You need to keep your composure." <laughs> keep your composure. I love that that we have a guy who in Al, in Io Desumu yeah. is once again assuming starting point guard role he didn't think he would have, and handling it like that. Yeah, I, I slightly disagree with the eye popping stat line. I, it was eye popping for me, honestly. Uh, seventeen, six, and four with uh, two yeah. steals and a block, like <laughs> like in, in thirty six minutes. I didn't say it was awesome. a shitty stat line. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying for me. I said yeah. for me, it was eye popping. Okay, it, it was just because I'm like, yo, because that's the stat line. You, that's what we wanted him to do. We talked about that, you know, and I proved this. This is the things he did. The things we wanted him to do. We wanted you wanted him to increase that steal rate. You saw that beautiful steal he got after the made basket, even though he missed the layup, but that beautiful steal he got in that backcourt. Amazing stuff, man. 7 of 14 shooting, like you said, 3 of 6 from the three-point line, 50%. And the fact that he was so calm, every time he shot a three, I just thought it was going in. You know, it wasn't hope. The way it was in the first half of last year. Right, exactly. No, no, I'm just talking about when he would take the shot, it it didn't feel like hope to me, like – Sometimes when guys take shots, you're hoping it goes in. You're like, oh, my God, please let this go in. Patrick did that tonight for sure. But when you were taking that shot, when he was shooting those threes, it was like, oh, that's the right shot. Oh, that's how it's supposed to look? Yes. When he hit that other three and he came down laughing, talking, feeling good. Listen, man, he's, he's got it. The mental part of it, he's got it. And it's great to see the physical part of it catching up with him too. And for me, it's in addition to that poise, you can also tell that he's really – putting an emphasis on getting downhill, whether yeah, it's in transition yeah, yeah, or in the yeah. half court. Like, True. I think this was my prove it for him was getting more paint touches. Yeah. That's something that Billy's talked a lot about. And I thought, I mean, I would have to go look at the numbers, but it felt like he was really getting downhill without speeding himself up. Mm. I think that's a really important distinction for a young player. That's like, he, he does, he doesn't get sped up. He plays at his own pace, but now he's also trying to up that pace, yeah. get in there faster and make decisions. You saw a couple of times where, you know, I, I think on that steal, he kind of like got a little bit, out in front of his skis, but for the most part, I was just really impressed with the way that he was able to get downhill and sort of lead that um, that transition game and that just downhill game that the Bulls really want because mm -hmm. as good as DeMar was, I don't really feel like it was in the same way as last year where it was like, all right, DeMar, go get us something. We got nothing else. <laughs> they were like getting him in through the offense. Um, they were working side to side a little bit, and then when it broke down, when the fourth quarter rolled around in the third quarter, I mean, he had 19 points in the third quarter. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, that's really where DeMar started to shine. So I, I thought they played off of one another really well. Agreed. Uh, shout yeah, out to – go ahead, Mark. No, I was just going to say, like, we, we talked about the Billy closing with three guards, and you don't bring your Dragic for defensive reasons. So I wonder if he's hmm. closed with Dragic, with Caruso, and Io, three guys who want to get in transition, three guys who want to push the ball – because it sort of enables the Bulls to not get stuck in half-court possessions where you have to rely on that DeMar ISO ball. So I think that was actually part of the tactical reason as to why Billy did that, because you, you've got three guards, all of whom can push the ball. And as we saw, like the Bulls' defense was good all night, and the minute they got that rebound, whether the outlet was coming to do Caruso, Io, Dragic, whoever it was, the Bulls were moving and running. So that, that was huge. And I'm assuming that's the case with Billy. Maybe the uh, the beat guys are asking those questions and we'll get that confirmation. But I have to assume that's why he was closing with Dragic to sort of get the Bulls out of those half-court possessions. Mm -hmm. Shout out to our guy Alexander in the comments uh, with the super chat saying Bulls dub, <laughs> LFG. 
Unfortunately, Pat just did cardio. <laughs> did, he, did he even get some cardio in? That joke was for you, Mark. Uh, ooh, 847 Leon taking a step further in the comments saying P Wheel equals Kwame Brown 2.0. That's wow. just yeah, ouch. That's, just wrong. that's just harsh. Hey, you gotta, you gotta hey. be a. F- no. He was a, he was a number one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's like, a, he was a number one. Be a number one pick, dog. Uh, on. We will talk about the <laughs> underwhelming night from Pat yeah. and many more things to get to as many more co- of your comments as we can as we move forward through CHO Bulls post game. You guys keep them coming. In the meantime, while we read a couple of ads here, Why hit not? that thumbs up button. We got a hundred plus likes. Thank you all for those. We got almost four hundred and seventy five people. In the chat. Come on. Hit them thumbs. We need more likes. We need (laughs) more. I thought you said we need more legs. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. It's not a picture of a leg. It's a picture of a thumb. It's like when Joey, you said it starts with an R. Done. <laughs> I was I was trying to f- get Joey to guess what the name of the, sh- the old show was, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yes. He could not guess it. Just a little bit before his time. Just a tad. Skosh. There's um, also a classic movie you guys were talking about that I hadn't seen. But I right. kept it's it to a myself. cartoon, it's cartoon TV mm. show. But it's okay. It's okay, Joe. It's not your it's okay. fault. It's not okay. your fault. We can move past it's this. Good. Uh, and hit the subscribe button while you're hitting that thumbs up button. Both of them help us out a lot. Uh, all right. So, no question, the DraftKings Sportsbook King of the Night tonight. Mm. It's the King of the Fourth. Uh, it has to be. It's DeMar freaking DeRozan. Yes. There is your DraftKings King of the Game. Yeah. There you see his stat line, 37, <laughs> six boards, nine dimes on 14 of 22 from the field. That is stupid. Yeah, and there's tough. your evidence, NBA fans, that the NBA is back. The yes. wait is over. So tip off the season with DraftKings Sportsbook, mm-hmm. an official sports betting partner of the NBA, and our official betting partner here at CHGO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New customers can make any $5 bet on an NBA money line and get $200 in free bets if your team wins. Free. And check this out. In addition to those usual bets, everyone can boost their winnings up to 100% with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Mm-hmm. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app, opt in and place a stepped up same game parlay today. With bigger payouts than ever, DraftKings Sportsbook is where I go to bet on the NBA and my Bulls beating the stupid Miami Heat. <laughs> Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code CHGO. Make any $5 bet this week and get $200 free in free bets if your team mm. wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with that promo code. One more time, CHGO. Uh, my boy just hit me up and said, uh, I might have to get some Birkenstocks like your guy. Yes! <laughs> I thought about putting Shout the perks away for the first regular season game. I said, yeah. no, it was a nice sunny day out. Yeah. Rocking the perks. That means you have to wear them until they lose, and it's 40 degrees. <laughs> done. It it's 40 done. Degrees. done. Done. Have you not met this man? Just saying. He just, will do it. Just keeping my eye on the temperature. Well, he will do it, man. Well, then I have a question for you, Will. What time is it? Game time? Ooh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> The dramatic pause. I'm Ron Burgundy. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> Game time, y'all. Damn it, who put a question in Will's teleprompter? <laughs> he know he's got to read it. The hottest new ticket in sight, y'all, is game time. Hoot. <laughs> it makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. Have you ever dreamed of sitting in that seat you thought you never could? You want to sit next to Flo right at a game like Joey did? That 50-yard line, courtside, behind home plate, floor seats at a concert? Go watch the Bulls win? Why they kick the crap out of somebody? Yes, you can do all those things with the Game Time app. The biggest last-minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy because you will not find better deal this season on tickets to see the beloved Chicago Bulls. You just won't do it. And just like CHGO is created by the fans and for the fans, and it guarantees you the lowest prices. So here's what you do. First, you hit that like button. Then... You click the link in the description and you hook yourself up with some awesome tickets. That's what you do. You join over 15 million people who have downloaded the Game Time app and score the best seats to all your favorite events. Because, Matt, what time is it? Game Time. Who? Yeah. Shout out Randy Brown. <laughs> um, man. Mmm. Feel good. Felt good. Felt good, man. Shout out to Fernando, whose super chat keeps us rolling along on post game, saying, Hello, crew. Glad to see Bulls basketball season has started. I'll be here watching all season long. I'm here for game one. Yes. That's how you start a season, That's Fernando. How you do it, man. Appreciate how you. Do it. you. Yeah. Um, also, shout out to Adrian in the comments who threw this delicious little factoid in there. Okay. The Heat have not lost a season opener for the last 15 years until tonight. 
Wow. As Io and Demar said, "What's up?" Wow. Can somebody fact check that real somebody quick? I'm not down you, Adrian. I believe <laughs> I you. No, but no, it's, it sounds better. Who cares? Even if it's wrong, let's just go with it. <laughs> let's just <laughs> go with it. Let's just go with it. Richie chiming in with another super chat, saying, "Great team win tonight." Yeah. Suck it, Vooch haters. Yes. Oh, oh my God. Christian saying, "Io 17 points, Lowry two. Yop." I love that. <laughs> can we talk about Vooch for a second, man? We can. Can we get on Vooch? Sure. For one and second? then we got to talk about Pat. Yes. Can we talk about we'll Vooch get first. on Pat for sure. Let me, let me, because I think everybody here is on the Vooch train. And, and we've been talking about Vooch and just how good he is and the skill set that he has and how rare it is to find 15 points, 17 rebounds. Now, he shot terrible. He was like 5 of 13. 5 of 13. He missed so many. 1 he missed, of 5 on threes. Yes. And, and the putbacks he was missing were, were infuriating. <laughs> it was like, no, don't. He was missing bunnies. But it wasn't uh, maybe infuriating, strong, a strong word. It was a little upsetting to watch him just miss those bunnies because you know he can hit those shots. But just like last season, man, when he's struggling, but you needed a bucket and you needed to have it, oh. you called on Nikola Vucevic. Oh. That three he hit, look, man. Colossal, oh my God. huge three pointer that he hit to keep that lead and keep them at bay. Oh, it was just great to see. It felt so good watching yeah. him hit that three, man. But to shoot that poorly, but to still put up 15 is awesome, man. I love that. And Vooch always has those, or last season anyway, oftentimes had those nights where he really struggled with his shot yeah. and still had the confidence to take a massive one yep. late in the game. And that's the one he ends up hitting. Yep. I mean, I love watching a big man hit a big shot like that. Yes. It always makes me think back to Brad Miller. Shout out, Brad. <laughs> Brad Miller, shout um, out. Yeah, just, I'm, the re way read that super to... chat, Matt. Okay. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Alex, whose super chat is just here saying LeBron is a baby. Go Bulls. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is like <laughs> the cherry on the Sunday of watching the Lakers, <laughs> right, Mark? as we all expected, <laughs> shit the bed last night. <laughs> or here's good. Lakers bad. LeBron sad. Matt happy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Will, what were you saying, Will? Go ahead. I have no idea no, you, what I was you, saying. I think you were adding on the boots. People keep interrupting us with these super chats. I don't, I don't, I don't hate that it. Important. <laughs> um, I, just, I guess I just appreciated the way that he was able to have a huge impact on the game without necessarily scoring well. Like, there were some frustrating plays yeah. where he was trying to get position in the post, and he kind of faded away or took a hook shot, and it yeah. didn't go in. But five offensive rebounds, that's like a, a shift in identity that the Bulls are trying to implement this year. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate the fact that he kept on shooting. Five threes is probably the right number yeah. for him. Uh, he was a little bit lower in preseason. But then, I mean, eight boards in the first quarter and 17 total. Like, that that really helped the Bulls stay afloat. So, And he had a couple of really nice assists. That one to the corner shooter, I think it was DeMar uh, for three. Yeah. I mean, he just I thought he had a well-rounded game. Go ahead, Marque. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna highlight two plays. We'll just touch on one. That the one where uh, Vooch was posting up on the block. I think it was the left block. Demar sort of sitting in that right corner. Vooch, because he can. You, you've said this a million times, Dave. But there are so few centers in the NBA that have the passing chops that Vooch does. I think you can make the argument that Vooch may be the best passer on this team. And I don't, I don't say that to slight others, but that's how good Vooch is as a passer. But like that pass he made into the corner for DeRozan for that three. Like he just connects. The strong and weak side of the court like that that is so important for this team particularly without Lonzo but like shout out to, to Vooch for you know his defensive intensity tonight like yes. there was one possession deep in the fourth quarter where uh, you know we've been banging on about drop defense for years now even before the Vooch era but like there was a possession in the in that fourth quarter where Vooch was at the level of the screen and the screen was beyond the three-point line and here's Vooch at the level then him and Caruso switched that uh, that switch their screen. So Caruso is, uh, sorry, Vooch is guarding uh, Tyler Hero, it was, beyond the three-point line. A number of different uh, times where the Heat are trying to to get uh, Hero on the move there, but Vooch is sticking on him on the switch to the point where uh, Hero couldn't get it, couldn't, couldn't get past uh, Vooch at all. And, and Larry ends up taking some terrible shitty three that the Bulls again forced a stop, got into transition, and then looked to move on offense. So like, as much as people may read the box score and see five or 13 shooting from Vooch, one or five from three, and just think this game was very similar to last season from Vooch. Like if, if you're just reading the box score, if you are a meathead who's not necessarily like watching every possession, uh, you can, it's easy to say that Vooch had a bad game, but I thought he was fantastic tonight, despite the offensive inefficiencies, he was really important. And um, as we've sort of been saying, like the guys around DeRozan, like this was a team win. So Vooch, Caruso, whoever you want to talk about, they all played, Fantastic basketball, and I'm glad we are shouting out Vooch because he was just super impressive, particularly on defense. Uh, sandwich between our 
Vooch praise and what will probably be a lot of frustration talk about Pat uh, is this hilarious comment that we have to mention, who is Mike saying, Peck, you never give any love to Cliff Levingston for what time is it? The OG. There's a reason for that. Oh, That's because Cliff is this man's Dude, <laughs> you're looking at one of the biggest Cliff Levingston fans in the world right here. I did not All right? know that. I, I enjoy Big Cliff Dave Levinson. is my a guy. first 3P <laughs> wow. guy. I'm a second 3P guy. This is true. This is how we relate. This is how we work together. This is true. This so is true. what time is it game time? Who for me? Randy Brown. This is true. That's your Cliff Levingston guy right there. Good news, baby. And remember, that's what Horace Grant named me. Horace Grant gave me Cliff Levinson's nickname one day. That's said, true. That's good news right there. That's how he introduced me to Scotty Pippen. That this is a flex is right a here. Flex. <laughs> He's a flex going on. That is a flex. That's a flex going on, son. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm glad Come you knew on, I was going with that. Yeah, baby. I love that I knew that, that Will, just saying the word that, was going to be a dramatic pause to <laughs> is a flex. That was a flex. I'll show you some pictures. <laughs> it was, a, it was an excellent time. That All was right. a highlight of life. That's I feel like it's only yes. fair that we tossed the first Pat Williams <laughs> spikeable volleyball up towards Mark K. Mark, um, Pat does start tonight. 28 minutes, four points on two of six. Not a whole lot else going on in the stat sheet or on the court with our eyeballs. What are your thoughts? I mean, to, I mean, I, was, I didn't want to talk about him, to be honest with you, because I wanted to just revel in the good news, but... He was the worst player tonight. Well, let's not sugarcoat this. This was Tony Snell-esque performance from Patrick Williams. And it was really, really, really annoying. Uh, and I'm glad the Bulls got the win. I'm, f I'm glad the way they played in the second half because it sort of just took me away from just being that complete down on Pat sort of mood that I had in that first half. But, I mean, if we want to be real, like, he was bad. And irrespective of what unit he was in, it was the same old crap. Like, he was just sort of hanging around in the corner and... That's the part I don't understand. Like the whole idea of Pat Tementi going into the second unit was to get him more of it, more of the ball in his hands, for him to have more opportunities creating, for him to be more aggressive and moving off the ball. These sorts of things that you know, we Donovan, whoever's been talking about, but he was just sort of standing and chilling in chill mode with that second unit as well. Like you saw Caruso, I even Kobe. Like we haven't talked about Kobe. Kobe wasn't great tonight, but he did some things. Like they all wanted to actively be part of the game, and this is my thing with Pat. Like irrespective of whether you're on ball, you can still be aggressive and do stuff. We saw that in the last preseason game, but I don't know, man. I, I just don't, I don't know what to say anymore. Like, it's the same old crap that we've been talking about for three years now. At some point, hopefully it changes, but I, I yeah, I don't want to spend too much time talking about him because this was an awesome win and every other ball was, was productive, but Pat was bad, man. And I, hopefully I'm not the only one saying this and hopefully everyone else isn't, you know, crushing or crapping on me now for being a hater, but like, surely we have to call things how things are and, he just wasn't good, and it's it's concerning. It's disappointing because he just got his starting spot back. Yeah, you know, this is this was an ample opportunity for him to do something, particularly with Zach out. Like this was a, a game calling for the Bulls, or the Bulls were calling for someone to do something. And, yeah, no, yeah, no one should catch chill. flack for calling Pat bad tonight. I mean, you got to call a turd a turd. He played like crap. That's it. Got to call it what it is. Man. Yeah, he was bad. He was definitely bad tonight. And. Like you said, uh, Mark, it was just so many. It was so many opportunities because they were just like, "Dudes, can somebody do something for us? We need help. Our all star is not here. Somebody, please step up." You didn't think it would be Dragic, you know what I'm saying? You had no clue. But you're looking at Pat, and he's in the starting line, and you wanted to see him thrive and make and move forward. And it was it was so messed up because we're watching the alley oops happen, and we're like, "Wow, look at Pat!" And it's actually drumming. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, oh, that's Drummond doing the alley-oop. Similar build, yeah. same hairstyle. Yeah, it, it was like, oh, it was confusing. I'm like, that's not good. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing that. You, I should know that you're going to be out there doing those things. He didn't look engaged. Um, even And what made things worse is it was that turnover in the fourth when they inbounded the ball oh. to him. And so oh. that magnified it uh, oh. a little bit more. Oh. <laughs> that, that definitely magnified yeah. Oh, it. Yeah. That one, it that magnified it for me. him, man. And yeah, it was frustrating. I mean, he he had two play where he scored, where he put the ball on the floor and he went to the bucket and and he scored a couple times. But even those didn't look smooth. You know, those looked rough and and plotting. You know what I'm saying? And it it just didn't look like normal basketball moves. And yeah, man, it was tough. It was a tough game for him, bro. Like, yeah, he looked bad. He was wearing an invisibility cloak. He was just like not <laughs> present. He did yeah. not put his impact on. Harry the game Potter at all. would have had more success on an NBA court apparently Ooh. tonight than Patrick Williams. Ooh, Quidditch. But I mean, <laughs> and it's it's 
it's confusing to me mm-hmm. because you see games like the last preseason game against the Bucks, which obviously it's a preseason game. Right. The real stars are not playing. But you see him do all these things, and you know it's in there. Right. And to Mark's point that he's always making, like, we're not asking that much here. And it's just like, go rebound. Go set screens and cut hard. Mm. And, like, we didn't see any of that tonight. Yeah. They tried to put him in some screening actions, had him, you know, rolling off of screens and stuff like that. But just, like, a really frustrating game from him because Mm. we know it's there. And, like, the opportunity was there, too. Zach was out. They needed somebody to step up and be a scorer. They needed somebody who can step up and, like, have the ball in their hands a little bit. And, like, we talk about, oh, maybe Pat's, like, not really best equipped to be a standstill spot-up shooter in the corner. Mm. Well, today is a day where he could have the ball in his hands a little bit. Yeah. And he just, like, wasn't ready for that moment. And so it's frustrating. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't really know where you go with a player that can have such a great game and then completely fall backwards like that. It's yeah. just, like, it's hard to and, and have it, any consistency. And it's not even just to fall. It's, it's how he looked comfortable in falling backwards. You know what I mean? Like, content. You know what I'm saying? With it. Like, yeah. yeah like, okay. it doesn't bother him. Yeah. Like, okay, I feel. You know what I mean? It was tough, but. And it's hard yeah. to say, like. It was tough, how, man. It's hard to say how he feels about of all course, this. And, like, of course. what he. You know, what it what it looked like to exactly. me. And, and I'm. I hope this doesn't continue. I, I'm not saying this is a trend or something's going to happen, but that's just what it looked like. Like, I forgot you were out there on the floor. I forgot. I, I for real, would forget he was out there, man. And that's just, yeah, that's disappointing, Mark. That was just disappointing. It is. And look, there's, there's, a, there's a few comments here in, 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 the, in the stream about, like, why would Pat be aggressive without quality touches or whatever it may be? But, like, we're, there's not going to be opportunities for Pat to get on-ball touches with this team. Like, in the first unit, it's going to be DeMar and Levine. Even in the second unit, you're going to have guys like Caruso and, and Dragic dominating the ball. But that, does, that shouldn't stop you from being aggressive. And as Billy sort of spoke about last time around, like, aggression doesn't mean doing stuff off the bounce. You can be aggressive just by hitting a hard freaking screen, grabbing a tough offensive rebound, and having really good quality defensive possessions. There's no excuses for having two rebounds. Someone with Pat's power and athleticism should not have two freaking rebounds. Like, <laughs> it's not what I don't, I don't care if he scores four points a game. Like, that's not right. my issue. But he's not involved in the game. Like, even like, Kobe is someone who is frustrating to me as a player. He's someone who frustrates like probably 95% of this fan base, but you never have to question Kobe's intent. Maybe you have to question the outcome, but you're never questioning his intent. He's always engaged, always active in the play. That's not something we can ever say about Pat, which is annoying because we know he can be effective in an off-ball role, but for whatever reason, he's just a loaf man. And it's, 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 Maybe just a trait of his. Maybe it's very similar like Lowry where he's just comfortable. Like Matt just sort of touched on it there. Like he was very comfortable in just letting others do things. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's just frustrating because you know, we know he can be more, but maybe, I don't know. I don't know if he knows he can be more. Mm. Yikes. Uh, all right. <laughs> We still have a few super chats I see in the comments that we will get to coming up next. Plus, we got to get to Big Dave's goon of the night. Roar, roar. We need to address that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's some funny comments, too. But before all of that, we got a couple more quick ad reads to get to. Uh, and while we're doing this one more time, please hit us uh, with one of them thumbs up if you haven't already. We got 500 plus watching with us tonight Woo. live on YouTube. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Bulls Nation, you're the best. Also, hit that subscribe button in case you aren't subscribed to the CHGO Sports YouTube channel already, as you should be. Big Dave, let's yeah. just toss a hypothetical out there. Sure. If Pat Williams were going to try and maybe hide from a little bit of the noise that might uh-huh. be coming after a dud game like this, mm-hmm. where might he find a affordable, mm-hmm. comfortable, and cost-free replaceable mm-hmm. pair of sunglasses to sort of duck from the media after tonight's game. Wow, man, that, that is a very interesting question. I appreciate you bringing that to my attention. Oh, you're very Thank welcome. You. Um, and also, you know, being in South Beach, oh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, tons of sunshine out tons there, Tons of sun out there, man. So I think there is something that he can do. Shady Rays, baby. Oh, I didn't even know if you had an answer. I was just mm, tossing that question out there. Well, it just came to me off the top of my head. Just like everything I'm about to say is coming to me off the top of my head right now. <laughs> You know, they never understood people at Shady Rays why sunglasses are so expensive. We don't either. So they say, you know what? We're going to change some things. You don't have to break the bank for quality sunglasses, y'all. This fall, summer, whenever, you ain't got to break the bank because Shady Rays got you covered like a blanket. That was premium polarized shades featuring those world-class optical clarity. Sustainable. Oh, I messed up the word. Sustainable durability. And styles catered to everyone and their lifestyle. A tay. Mm. 
Got to throw it all in, man. <laughs> yes. Best part about Shady Rays, they have the most insane, crazy protection program in all of eyewear. The lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your shades, like if Matt was just losing his mind watching the game. This were shades. Yes. Of a hat. And he broke them. Even if it was day one, <laughs> you tell Shady Rays they broke, guess what? They're going to send you a brand new pair. It's incredible. No questions asked. Just got them. They got you covered, man. It's a beautiful thing. Shady Ray customers seem to agree with over 200,000 five-star reviews, y'all. Some, so many. It's so many. It's Practically so a million. They stand behind their product. <laughs> Practically <laughs> a million. Oh, the math. The math is mathing. Oh, they stand behind their product. Math pack. The math. <laughs> Not my best subject at school. Oh, my God. It. Yes, y'all. And also those free returns and exchanges. Those are also beautiful things, man. You'll either love the shades that Shady Ray sent you or they, they will pay to ship them back. Wow. They will give you money and say, come on, ship them back, man. This is a beautiful thing. This is a beautiful thing. Patrick Williams, come get down. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Ray's is running that deepest deal of the season. They're going deep, Will. They're going deep. Deep. <laughs> Use the code CHGO. I saw him, I saw him breaking. I just figured I just might as well just break the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Use the code CHGO for 50% off of thing. two or more pairs at shadyrace.com. <laughs> Buy one, get one free. What's that called, Matt? Uh, BOGO. BOGO. B-O-G-O, BOGO. You get two of them pairs for the low $54, y'all. Redeem at shadyrace.com where you can find all the newest and best shades. Shade day. Raise, get you some. <laughs> oh my God, no Beautiful one in thing. the world has more fun reading ads <laughs> on their podcast. Yo, did you see the one where dude said, "I called my wife in the room just to hear Big Dave read ads"? <laughs> did you see? The, did you see that? Yeah. I saw, I saw that, that one. It and was, whoever I don't that was, who, I'm sure. I don't remember who said it, but yeah, I'm sure they, their wife okay. loves them more now, <laughs> right? Because they. That's so strange. Their wife to, to your say, beautiful Honey, address. come here. Someone's reading commercials. <laughs> honey, come quick. Big D's reading ads about sunglasses. <laughs> I think it might have been a race to hate. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. But shout out. It was. It was. Um, it, was. It, was race it was a race to hate, to hate right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I called my I mean, wife in the room. Come watch Big Dave ad reads. Just <laughs> fantastic. We do have a couple super chats. Yeah, I see them. I'm getting to them right now. All right. First off, we got Andreas, bless their heart, with a super chat saying, my dad only takes me to get ice cream when the Bulls win. Mm. How many times do you think my dad is going to take me to get ice cream? 82. <laughs> After tonight, 81 more. Well, uh, if you read the uh, roundtable of season predictions yeah. brought to you by Will Lego Gottlieb on allchshow.com yesterday, and we all participated uh, in it Dave as well. And Mark. You would know that Nacho, even though uh, I invited him. Will and I think <laughs> that your dad's going to take you for ice cream 42 times this season. Mm -hmm. Mark and Big Dave think you're going to get ice cream 44 times this mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. Does that ha has that changed for any of us after watching one game against yes. the Heat? 81. <laughs> 81, 81 and 1, y'all. I'm in meathead mode, Mark. <laughs> what that it is. <laughs> But, you know, you can get those cones that have, like, those multiple options where you can have, like, two scoops, three scoops. So, what are we talking here? You're getting one scoop from Daddy, you're getting two scoops, three scoops. Like, a game after tonight, I think you should be um, angling for the three scoop on that waffle Ooh. cone. Get that into you. Ooh. Wow. I no like shortcuts. that. Thank you. No yeah, shortcuts. I like that. Three different flavors in one cone is a lot. I'm a, I'm a two flavors one cone. Guy. That sounds like one awesome. scoop of mean? like one scoop of one flavor, different scoop of a different flavor. Who says no? I don't want an extra scoop of ice cream if they're <laughs> going to give it to me. <laughs> that's just, who does that? That's a lot <laughs> you know of what ice. Saying, Mark? What is that's that? That's a lot of ice cream to consume in one sitting, and then you got to deal with <laughs> oh, the meltiness of the ice cream. <laughs> Do you not like Joy? <laughs> like this is amazing. Come on, man. Come on, Joey, you want three scoops of ice cream? Yeah, that's fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that goes. I'm trying to think of the word for it. It's like a peckinated. He's <laughs> peckinated? A peckinated. Like he's the most opinionated person. Like I'm you, not want, you want to find someone. That's too much ice cream. It crosses <laughs> the, the threshold. Put that hey, man. Back. It's I as I've aged, I'm getting worse at digesting dairy. So three heaping scoops that's of ice fair. cream that's that fair. Is, fair. is a lot. That's that is fair. fair. Yeah. That's the athletic greens. I just talking. assumed it's because you treat your body as a temple and you just didn't want to put those extra calories down into your guzzle. That's, so that's what that's I always right. you meant. But that's right. Because right. I'm too busy drinking my athletic greens, Mark. <laughs> as you <laughs> grab the beer next to you. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is a 50-50 athletic greens slash beer, Joey. Yes. We have a super chat. John Davis 
play for the Wizards now? Uh, Vooch played the greatest defense of his life against Hero. I ain't seen him moving like that. Yeah. S- screw Tyler yep. Hero, by the way. Yeah. They did. <laughs> Thank you for that super chat. Another one, Jack So. 23 great win after going winless versus Miami last season. And Claire was talking about earlier, like mm-hmm. after the 0 and 14 against the top teams in the East last year. Yeah. This is yeah. Cool. Great point. Thank you for that super yeah. chat, Jackson. Yeah. And I did see that coming yeah. from Claire. Yeah. I think yeah. maybe Bulls fans were really digging this victory for that very reason. Yeah. How many times did we have to hear last season we're Owen blank against the top teams now. Now we're Owen blank. Now we're Owen teen blank. <laughs> um, like it was bad and it was rough to deal with. And, you know, me, particularly Miami, even after the Heatles broke up, even before the Heatles got together. Yeah. As like as long as Miami's been Riley's team, I have hated the Miami Heat yeah. with a burning passion. Yeah. Wins against the Heat to me, like basically count double. Mm. That's how I see wins over Miami so six in my mind. Six scoops of ice cream. <laughs> six <laughs> scoops of ice cream and the Bulls are two and oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He Chris, to get it Christian all. says, Terry time. Let's see them limbs flailing about. He's probably Man. the best early candidate for best dancer on the team. Yeah, I, he's doing what I said. He was, his impact was going to come. He was having was a great time bench. on yes. that bench, man. He, dude, it was great. It was great watching him, man, keeping guys engaged. He's going to be in the cat video a bunch, Will, right? <laughs> uh, I, would, I would imagine so. Great. We'll, 64 we'll hoops. Find out. Great win, guys. Can we see a world where Io keeps the starting point guard job even when Lonzo returns from injury ready to go? Yo. Mm. Is that really where your Do mind is right yeah. now? I don't know if I'm ready to talk about Lonzo. Marque tonight. looks like it. <laughs> oh, wow. I was like, I don't want to talk about that. Mark like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, have, I have a take. It's okay. Like, Mark, you go 64 first. 64 hoops. Oh, no, I'm glad 64 hoops brought this up. I was thinking about bringing this up, but then I didn't want to be too homer to, you know, bringing, just because we connected with the eye, I didn't want to make it seem like we were going too hard into this whole connection. But this is a take I'm working on, fellas. And I think I, this season... I think I don't know if Lonzo's going to come back and get that starting job, and I don't think he should necessarily if Io keeps playing like this. I think Io is going to cement himself into that point guard position if he keeps this up, and if he does, Lonzo as that super sub, that'll be pretty tasty too. So I'm feeling what 64 Hoops is putting out there. I think it makes a lot of sense. Picking up wow. what he's putting down. My wow. version is oh, yeah. why why pick one? Right, the, the Bulls have a. Uh, power forward spot that that's, they don't that's really where my mind just with. went i was like honestly start both of them start and them just both. don't start javante or that pat that's a, that i always say me. lonzo's i don't view him as a point guard i view him as a no as a wing who can distribute yeah power. he's like a swiss army knife yeah because really? he, he doesn't handle the ball a lot you're right real quick last super chat here sure. jr from grand rapids that's our what boy up, JR? we need to stop calling him p will because it's more like p won't oh ouch yeah, we, well, we do need another won't on the show after Guys, Dave changes handle. Right, we missed the won't. I was thinking that same thing. What if Will <laughs> changing his Twitter handle away from won't Gottlieb to actually will underscore Gottlieb is what's causing P. Will to be P. Won't? I mean, he was won't before no. that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> as soon as I started to make the logic in my brain, I was like, no, it's be- no. I try. I changed it's- it so that we could, you know, push him in the right direction. Mm. It's not working so far. So but it's only one game. <laughs> So okay. Christian with a uh, quick super chat uh, saying, uh, Io saying to Lonzo, I'm the captain now. Uh, <laughs> I love a good Tom Hanks movie reference. Oh, so good. Look at me. <laughs> Sorry, yes, there you go, Joey. Right there. <sighs> it was a goon time, man. It, you, yeah, it, you know what? It is. It could always time. be goon time. It's goon time. It's when goon is time. it not goon time? When is it not goon Did time? Did you see us watching that game just now? It was goon stuff going on, man. Goon of the night. It is time to hand out the title, y'all. For this man has a championship belt. Of the night. Who gets the belt? Who's going to get it? Do you all have any, any candidates? I, well, I'll open the floor first. If you all have any candidates for who you all feel should be going of the night, Matt, I'll start with you. I don't want to step on your toes. Sure. Because um, so, I think I might know who you're awarding this to. We share a brain. <laughs> and I feel like... Drummond did too much bad stuff Mm -hmm. to warrant winning Goon of the Night. Agreed. Because Goon of the Night is just the right amount of crazy. Yeah. Drummond was 12x the right amount of crazy (laughs) tonight into the very much wrong amount of crazy. Yeah. So I will give him a shout out. I know we touched on him briefly. Yeah. Andre Drummond, in that stretch of minutes early in the fourth quarter, dude, 
doing too much. <laughs> yes, man. Wow. Wow. How did you phrase it? This is exactly the kind of Andre Drummond I was afraid of this having. The one I feared. <laughs> right? This is the Drummond, this is the Drummond I, feared. I feared. Not the Drummond we were well we were oh, glad to, to welcome to Chicago. Yes. That was a crazy stretch of minutes that he played at the, at the end of this uh, game. It was. I, he, oh my God, he could not get off the floor fast enough yes, we in my like, eyes. Yes, okay, I was like, yeah, Billy, yeah. dude, Drummond is single-handedly trying to lose them this game. <laughs> get him out of there. Oh, man, yeah. For that reason, he is my goon of the night. Okay. Yikes. All right. Oh, uh, Will, yours? I mean, there's not like a a goon role player that really stood out. Mm. I think Dragic is maybe the closest thing, and maybe that's who you're going to go with. But mm. for me, it's DeMar. I mean, he mm. was just a freaking goon. <laughs> Mm. Those 19 third like quarter that. points in particular. Yeah. I could not, Which Will kept I asking us. He's like, that's not true. That. Is that yeah. true? I didn't know. Yeah. If, did I hear that wrong? <laughs> yeah. He thought did it was something really broken. Happen? Yeah. And then he was the closing all fourth quarter. He was the closing. How can you not love it? It's true. My, my guess was going to be Io for the moment you talked about with mm. him looking at Drummond. Like, yeah. get your head out of your ass, dude. Like, <laughs> Do it. That. Marque, who you got? I was going to say DeMar because he just beat the shit out of the heat in the half court. So that's where I was mm. going to go with it. But I, mm. I don't know what you're thinking, Dave. But I, I would have gone DeMar. That is a great choice. I did not go DeMar. Ooh. I went Alex Caruso. Interesting. Ooh. For my goon of the night. Interesting. Strictly for Do this. Tell. Wild card. Strictly for Because we talked about this, Will. Every game, you see him on that screen at the top of the key getting a foul called on some center. And it's going to happen. He did it again against Detman. Detman hit that man so hard. And Caruso went down. But then he got up and immediately started flexing. And you saw the muscles glistening in the South Beach light. He was ready to go. I was like, look at this man out here. He was out there acting a fool when it came to his defense. He was everywhere, diving in the passing lanes. When he was taking those, but it was when he was taking those bumps from dudes who are just twice his size and still being able to get up and provide the Bulls with something, playing into the fourth quarter. Because you know, Will, like you said, he's the one that's going to be closing. I loved every second of it, man. I was like, that's my goon right there. That's how goons should be acting and behaving. I enjoyed it. Whereas I saw that play go down and winced and was like, oh, gosh. Yeah, like, see, yeah. get Caruso to the <laughs> ER right now. <laughs> that got dude needs spine realignment. Yes, that's exactly what he Spinal. said. That's exactly what he said, too, Marque. But, no, he got up and he still played and still was on it. Goon of the night for me, Alex Caruso. I think I got my swagger back. Hey. Oh, oh. <laughs> we might need a new sound effect, but we'll figure it yeah, out. Yeah, no, it's a work in progress. Yeah, it's a yeah, work in it's progress. It's only the first game of the season. Yeah, we, first we're game. Still yeah. Yeah. Have you had time to peruse I got that a peruse giant of, audio I, library? I said yes, you? yes. I went through it, but it, it was there's a lot of stuff in there, so I only yeah. got <laughs> I only skimmed through it. I got it. It so is a whole process. Very well organized. Yes, but I, by I, movie genre, by movie title, by TV show genre. Uh, you title, have done it. You but I, I will me. also say I definitely did agree with with Mark K and Will because I Demar was super close because he was just mad goonish in what he was doing out there with that basketball. Okay, what's crazy to me here is that nobody said Javante, who <laughs> fouled out in 18 minutes and also tried to kill a man while attempting to dunk from the corner three. What the hell, that Javante? That is some Tom Goonery. That is some big time goonery that he put on there, man. But dude, I can't. It was the fact he fouled out. That's what it was for me. But yeah, that dunk, yeah, that was cold because he tried to end a person's life, including his own. He tried to do two for one out there, man. But and doing it injured, you know, you can see he was bothered by that hip pointer when he kept getting He's up slow, flying so. around the court yeah. and came up slow several times. He tonight. did, he did, man. Shout out Javante, to Javante, please. It's all right, man. We got eighty-one more to ease, baby. You, it's, it's, it's like, out there for you. Spinal tap. Oh, Javante, you can keep your knobs at 11. Just, like, take them down to 11 from 36, man. <laughs> don't know Jeez. no other way, baby. Marquea will tell you. He don't know no other way. That's can, true. Can I just read this comment from Joe the Blacksmith in, in the YouTube comments here? Sure. Caruso's spirit animal is a rabbit squirrel, and that is just a perfect <laughs> description of who Caruso is. That's perfect. You say That's rabbit exactly squirrel? Yes. Yeah, a like rabbit a squirrel, squirrel with rabies. Yes. Wow. Yeah. 
as a person who has dealt with girls. Good. Which, as Michael Scott informed us all, kills four Americans a year. <laughs> it's a very serious epidemic that we are not aware of. We need to raise money for the squirrel rabies. Fun run for a cure. Thank you. <laughs> 5K means five kilometers, Michael, not 5,000 yes. miles. <laughs> I have never oh, eaten man. so much fettuccine Alfredo and drank less water. <laughs> maybe maybe oh. we just need to stay in the office wheelhouse, Joey, so we understand each other's references all yeah, the time. That's fine. I it mean, like you. I'm, it's, usually a, it's usually a me problem. Yeah. I'm well, usually not the one making It was references. my fault for assuming that you should and could know what Rocky and Bullwinkle is. I mean. <laughs> right. Right. I wasn't I born in 1950. Enjoy. Yeah, I, I have to have Joey's yeah. back sometimes on these things because Matt just expects him yeah. to know all these things. I'm like, don't tell. What do you say? The babysitter movie? Like, what's that? don't tell him how the babysitter's dead. How's he supposed to know that? Like, seriously, right? And it's like when Matt calls Kanye West, yeet, yeet. Like, <laughs> you just look the other way on that man like does that. not deserve the respect of having his name pronounced correctly, especially considering it. It's his what seventh, eighth, ninth different name now. Oh, man, get over yourself. He called him yee. <laughs> Five hundred twenty-seven people lo- watching, only two hundred something likes. Momentary pause. To Momentary say, pause. Hit the Momentary like pause. button. We're gonna get out of here in a few minutes. Hit that like button while yeah. we're still here. Uh, I love our guy Mark Carmen. Shout out to him in the comments who just said Demar De Jordan. Ooh. <laughs> I saw somebody else in the comments that just said Demar greater than sign MJ, and I'm like, I'm not even gonna address that, but now I have to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I now mean, he's on it. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to do it. But the comparisons aren't cra- like Demar. Clearly does not fly, and I don't think ever really he he was a dunk contest participant back in the day, as as a young MJ was. We don't really think of this stage of Demar's career as MJ because MJ was a million different things in one beautiful package. Sure. But the one thing that you can say about Demar tonight is anyone, whether it be Bleacher Report or some dummy on NBA Twitter saying, Ah, Demar, he's fallen off. Yeah. He's another year older. Yeah. Father time. Did you see that man? pump faking the shorts off of everyone in a heat jersey tonight yeah. getting to his spots on the floor getting those and ones getting those whistles blown mm-hmm. the man is a master class in yeah. human form Did you see what he said after the game on like the post game on say? camera commentary cody washington tweeted this the so-called experts need to look for another job or do something like that <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I take it back. I take it back. This is yours, Savon DeRozan. This is yours. This is yours, sir. You guess look for belongs. another job. This belongs to you, sir. This is yours right here. Oh my god. <laughs> it's Mark. so true, though. I like over the summer. I was like, well, I, I know Demar is going to be great, but yeah. like, what if he's only ninety-five percent of what he was last season, not one hundred percent? Right. What if he's not breaking Wilt Chamberlain records every other night? Right. Right. What happens to the Bulls? Well, what if he's better? What, what if he scores better? 37 points a night? Dude, that was my question. had hours. That was my I, I was like, I didn't see anything to say he can't do what he didn't do, what he did last year. Like, what, just because he got older? Like, he got a year older? That, that's your it's basic not even, this? Yeah, it's like, it's not about age or, like, it's just, like, anything like that for me. It's just, like, yeah. the footwork. He's, he's a machine. He's a machine. He's a machine, Mark He decides how many pump fakes he's going to do. He's going to get somebody in the air. He's going to get to the free throw line. Or if not, he's just going to make a mid-range jumper like there's nobody there, even though there's three people on him. He's special. Go ahead, Mark. Well, I was just going to say, like, I, I was a doubter. And not, not a doubter in the sense that DeMar wasn't going to be good this season because he's always been a good, very good player, all-star level player. But, like, what he did last year in year 13 was we kind of get lost in the moment too much and we don't actually get have a chance to step back and realize – this just doesn't happen. Dudes who are 32, 33 years old, making the all NBA team like DeMar did, having a career year at that point in your career, it's just it, it's not a thing that happens. So for DeMar to then replicate that and maybe even go one step further this season, maybe he's better this year in, in year 14, which again, like if there are skeptics, like like maybe I was heading into this season, like I, if, I was thinking like if DeMar could just do 90% of what he did last season, that would be a fantastic outcome given that he was entering year 14. But if DeMar has a better season than last season, then whilst we're going to be lapping it up, whilst we're going to be enjoying 82 games of this absolutely mad lad going crazy, like at the same time, we kind of need to appreciate that this shit just doesn't happen. Like <laughs> DeMar doing what DeMar has done last season and maybe potentially this season, uh, this season as well, like we just don't see this. So it, it's kind of historic. And I don't know if we really 
recognize that in the moment, which is why it just doesn't make sense, why it doesn't compute, because it just shouldn't be happening, but nonetheless it is. And also two of three from the three-point line. Yeah. Also with that. With man. one big one oh, coming off a monster. screen. Monster. Yeah. Monster. In the fourth quarter. And that dunk he did? Lost mm. my mind. Mm. 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 My goodness. Yeah, man. Uh, Con- Connor in the comments, a couple more, and then we'll get out of here. said, can someone track the number of DeMar pump fakes? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if anyone's tracking it right now. Someone should track it. If I had to venture a guess, I would say the same number of positive reviews that Shady Ray has about their sunglasses. <laughs> what was that, 200,000? 200,000. I think DeMar had 200,000. And I'm talking about tonight's game. Mm-hmm. My guess, 200,000 pump fakes from DeMar. Yes. It's a good number. We're signing in free agency. Like, uh, good guy. Yeah, yeah Ricky, we're... I'll see if I can find this. But it was a great tweet about how he's like the 48th highest paid player in the league. And right. it's like an absolute And the value. most team-friendly deal that isn't a player on a current rookie scale contract. Marta Rosen is the 48th highest player paid player in the NBA this year. He's on the most team-friendly non-rookie contract in the league. Right. Remember when everybody was saying? Hashtag worst offseason moves. How he's the worst offseason Hashtag <laughs> bad contracts. Right. Hashtag watch. I'm, I'm, I've been 37, on the, nine and six, you guys. <laughs> I've been wrong on a lot of takes, but I'm glad to be on the right side of history with that one. <laughs> Man. Well, well done, Will. No kidding. Well done. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, Bulls start the season with a win. That is awesome. They get Woo! tomorrow off. We are also off tomorrow, Thursday. We'll be back for pre and post game Friday. Yeah. First night of a back to back. The Bulls are heading to Washington, D.C. as we speak to take on the Wizards, who kicked off their season with a win tonight against the Indiana Pacers. 114 107 was that final. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kuzma and Beal were leading the way. Kuzma had 22, Beal 23, Kristaps chipping in with 15 and 10. So we got two 1 0 teams going yeah. at each other, Bulls, Wizards on Friday night. And also, uh, Daniel Gafford, 12.7 rebounds off the bench. 15 minutes. Yes. Six of eight shooting. NBA yes. fans, go go tune in. <laughs> Utah currently leads Denver by nine points. Whoa. What's Lowry got? Uh, under oh, man. seven in the fourth. Uh, Lowry four. was their leading scorer. I told you. Oh! I told you. <laughs> 15, <laughs> I told you 15 on four three four. of six from behind the line. <laughs> I told you, man. He's like, you. Lowry is home. He's home, He's bro. with all the white people He's in Utah. Home. He's home, baby. He's home. He looks around. He's like, Finland. Yes. Man, <laughs> how funny would that be on the first game of the season? All of us being like, oh, Denver, Denver, Denver. All of us made to look like fools if they lose to Utah tonight. I had them fifth, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. Just goes to show, don't get too high, don't get too low. Fact. This is true. Come on, adult. Um, Mark, thanks so much for Mark joining K. us tonight, buddy. Glad you could be here. Mark will, of course, be joining us all all the time, as often as he can, for yes. our post game shows throughout the season. Follow him on Twitter in the meanwhile for all of his great Bulls takes at MK Hoops. All and check it. out his occasional columns over there at the allchgo.com website. Uh, <laughs> thanks and appreciation to our pal and our producer, Joey, for rocking a great show with us tonight. Joey. Follow him on Twitter at Joey's Path. Is Will is Will underscore Gottlieb. Race to 700. <laughs> Big Dave is at Bow, BAWL Sports. What was that? What was that, Joey? I said the race to 700 yes. follow, followers on Twitter right. for me. You guys <laughs> are at like 10,000. It's, it's either you get to 700 Twitter followers or I get to seven TikTok followers. That's the race. <laughs> guys, I joined TikTok today and I hate it. Yeah, but he Are you him. happy, Kev? He hates that. He you might happy? Like he hates that. He might I'm like both it. underscore Peck on Twitter and now also sadly on TikTok. Uh, <laughs> we are CHO underscore Bulls. Give the team account a follow as well. Um, we will see you right back here for pregame Bulls Wizards Friday night. Yeah. What, what time does that game tip off? Is that a six o'clock? Six, I think it's a six. Right? Hell yeah. yeah. That means yeah. we will see you here at 530, 530. Central Time for pregame. Woo, woo. For Mark, for Joey, for Will, for Big Dave, I'm Peck. Appreciate God. you. Love you, Bulls Nation. Whoa. Give us that thumbs up Tone. before you head out. Subscribe to the CHGO Sports YouTube Levy. channel. Kim. We will see you here on Friday night. Bulls are 1-0. 1-0, oh, baby. Tomorrow. Talk to you tonight. You're stupid, and I love you. Oh. See Red be good, guys. Mm.